welcome back to Stop, Drop, and Roll! We are a group of friends turned found family who love ourselves in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, uh, today we actually have a really fun uh, extra thing for you. We have a one-shot going on today with some guests today with us. So we'll go ahead and get straight into that. It's a space western set in space, as you can imagine. And it's going to be, um, it's been a fun time. We, we kind of slapped it together in the last couple days and I, I hope you guys enjoy. So uh, without further ado... Let's go and introduce our cast and our guests. We'll start with our main cast, uh, who are normally here for Grim Troop. Gavin. Yo, I'm Gavin. Uh, are we introducing our characters as well? Uh, yeah, let's go and introduce our characters and pronouns, please. Okay, and I'll be playing uh, 351T0, or as the group calls him, Todd. And uh, his pronouns are he, him. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. And uh, Becca. What's up, guys? I'm Becca. Today, I'm playing Orville Ash Bascom, and Orville's pronouns are he, him. Awesome. Uh, and we have two guests with us today, great friends of mine and also fans of the show, and I'm super, super excited to have them here. Let's start with the most talkative member of chat, Mason. Uh, Yo. I'm Mason. Um, I'm playing Sil Argery, and his pronouns are he, him. Lovely. And last but certainly not least, Zach. I'm Zach, and I am playing Dakila, and their pronouns are they, them. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, well, we have no announcements today. We're just going to get straight into the lovely action. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy, and um, we're going to get started. We'll see you after the intro. Oh, have a seat, grab a drink, and get ready for some hot dice bill storytelling. Welcome to the frontier. Several centuries ago, humanity mastered space travel. They spread across galaxies and colonized neighboring star systems with the belief that humanity could populate the universe. The dream was short-lived. The rapid expansion led to territorial disputes and resource scarcities that left many planets without available water, food, or even sustainable life. The immediate collapse gave way to the Titan Wars, a series of conflicts that ended with the creation of the Interstellar Federation of Nations. The IFN may have won the Great Resource War in the last century, but that doesn't mean they've won over the hearts and planets of the frontier. Here, on the outer edge of the Alpha Centauri galaxy, this belt of cultures planets and systems seems hell-bent on defying the IFN at every turn. With a severe lack of IFN enforcers and plenty of ne'er-do-wells, the only guaranteed way to find justice is through a cowboy. A bounty hunter for hire. You all are a group of cowboys aboard the star freighter Sirius X-9, more colloquially known as Dead Dog. You are from various backgrounds, creeds, and ideals, but the need for camaraderie and food on the table keep your ragtag crew held together, but just barely. But recently, a week has gone by, food has fallen short. You need a contract, something to put plenty of ginza in your pockets and a meal in your stomachs. And it's here, in the night sky of space, the dome of stars above you, and aboard the dead dock, that we start our story today. A churning low growl wakes you up, Ash. You groggily sit up, the uh, tin and aluminum surface that you were napping on, leaving your back with a long sort of ache. The kind of ache from sleeping too long on a too hard surface. Something that you know all too familiarly. You groggily sit up. And again, that familiar rumble in your stomach starts. You see the surface of Kepler-22 beneath you, 22B. The almost Earth, with city lights dotting its surface. A place you're not eager to return to anytime soon. And... As you sit up, groaning, looking about the cabin, uh, you don't see many of the, uh, the ship's occupants, but you have the ship's interior before you. What are you doing? 
First of all, before you do, what do you look like, my friend? Yeah, I've got a whole yeah. intro. Let's yeah. go. So, Ash wakes up in the uh, sort of barracks and rubs the sleep out of his eyes and heads down to the place that he's become most familiar with on the ship. So deep within the bowels of the dead dog, nestled between these two large wooden crates in the cargo hold, you see Ash. The long, beaten-up duster coat that he wears hangs stiffly around his sturdy body. His steel-toed leather boots have certainly seen better days. In fact, you get the sense that all of his garments, his denim-patched pants, the browning gun holsters that crisscross his thighs, his worn-down button-up shirt, so stained with sweat that if you were to attempt to guess its original color, you'd probably be wrong. <laughs> All of these garments once painted the picture of a relatively stylish man. The type of guy you'd expect to see sweeping into town on top a horse, dripping with mystery and the promise of hard-won or stolen gold. Once upon a time, those steel-toed boots and the feet that filled them made tavern ladies swoon and proper gentlemen flush with envy. But tonight, here on this spacecraft floating through the star-speckled darkness, Orville Bascombe sits alone. And that's just how he likes it. His wind-weathered face is downturned, the cybernetic gears now touched with rust that frame his right eye, his shooting eye. Prevent him from squinting fully as he polishes his old faithful pistol. Some time ago, the name Orville Bascom uttered aloud would send whispers echoing through a room. Once because of the tales of his skill, the mastery of those calloused hands. You've probably heard it said that by the time you hear the whisper of movement towards his trusty pistol, it was already too late for you. Later, his name was famous for another reason. Wanted posters depicting his name and face littered the streets of cities across galaxies for years, promising hefty reward for his capture. Until, finally, the widely known tale of his untimely death eradicated his name from the lips of travelers and mercenaries alike. His memory, like so much else in this world, began to turn to dust and got swept away on the wind. And so, Orville known only to the crew of Dead Dog as Ash, sits alone below deck as the familiar thrum of the rest of the crew working above him drones along. He works, gritting his teeth and ignoring the rumbling calls of his empty stomach, repeating to himself in his mind over and over, Just one last job. One last job. A bit of sparking noise from above decks fails to grab the attention of Ash, but it does grab the attention of the person who's currently underneath the pilot's chair, tinkering away underneath its surface. It's uh, a human man, um, like Ash himself, uh, currently kind of with a welder's helmet over his face and the, the sparks of a soldering kit going off underneath the cockpit, where it looks like some sort of damage was done maybe in a, a firefight in a couple weeks prior. Uh, nearby him is a, a tall... Um, seemingly junky looking figure uh an android perhaps the two of them passing notes and commenting on uh, how best to repair the ship why don't we have uh, mason you introduce our character and followed by gavin um so the man underneath the pilot's cockpit is um a human man he's got short brown hair and he's wearing simple clothes but Clothes that he can move around in easily. He has a leather jacket and a simple t-shirt. But by his hip, he has a, a holster with a really weird looking contraption of a gun sitting in it. It's got a giant battery on one side and it just doesn't, it barely fits in the holster. And um, he's got this weird metal contraption on his back. And it seems like it should be a backpack, but it just doesn't look like it stores anything and he's just tinkering away at this chair 
All right. The figure next to him is occasionally making small color commentary on how uh, the pilot could be better uh, tinkering with the ship, as a tall-looking android is making some comments. Gavin? Yeah, this android is handing uh, various wrenches uh, to the, the pilot. And you see uh, a very tall android, uh, but unlike the androids that you are used to, sort of being a unified uh, body, this android is different. It has the the head of uh, a soldier, a soldier android that would have fought in the Titan Wars, but its arms are that of various factory machines. Its legs are that of agricultural androids. Seemingly, its body is cobbled together with the pieces and remnants of old, other discarded androids. Um, it has... Uh, he has one missing eye and one glowing yellow bright eye. And he also wields a, uh, a large staff that doubles as his walking cane because this form he's created for himself uh, makes it a bit difficult to move around. Mm. Uh, still, Argori, uh, that is not the wrench you should be using. Here, try this. Thanks. It, no, this one doesn't fit either. Am I, am I this, doing it wrong? That, that, well, you left have right. human I hands. Know. Right right to left. I'm, I'm not strong. I'm very... The two of them start tinkering up in the front. <laughs> um, the last figure we find currently hunched over, um, staring at a blank screen. A black screen. Um, where it seems like there would be something, various post-it notes of different prices and wanted posters kind of surrounding the screen, but the screen itself, empty. The figure facing it, a black-eyed figure. Not black-pupiled, black-eyed, full irises black, save for the golden makeup that makes up the outside of their eyes. An alien creature that seems to be on board, a part of the crew. Zach. Would you like to introduce your character as Tequila's facing the black screen? So this alien creature sits uh, about average height, but with dark gray skin with some yellow coloring around the eyes and the and uh, hair that's in a half up, half down pony. And, he, and they wear just your simple leathers and a small leather vest so they can move around a bit more and they're just sitting and staring and waiting to see something pop up on the screen but that you can sense that there seems to be more going on in their mind than there is on the outside mm. Like a big storm brewing underneath Tequila's eyes, but the outside calm and placid. Until Tequila 2. That low rumble of their stomach. And out from the cockpit. As Sil's stomach grumbles. A harmonic grumbling of hungry, hungry people. What is this sound? All of you seem to be making sounds from your bodies. Um, I don't know. We're kind of hungry. I mean, I am at least. Ah, yes. Hunger. Hmm. A problem I am not faced with. Yeah. This is the wrench, by the way. I think you got it. Okay. Cool. At this you, point, oh, go ahead. Can you try? I just, it, my hands are very, like, I can't do it. It's not moving at all. Like, I'm pulling and it's not. <laughs> all right, so step aside. Uh, thanks. All right. Uh, if you want to make a Tinker Tools check to try and fix up the cockpit, you absolutely can. Absolutely. First roll now, of the what day. What kind of a roll would that be, my, my good DM? Uh, that would be a Tinker Tools check. So uh, for you, that's uh, probably intelligence, uh, intelligence, uh, or 
or dexterity. Uh, and then you would add your uh, <clears throat> your proficiency bonus because you're proficient in Tinker's Tools. Great, great, great. Cool. 19. 19. Ooh. Hey, easy. You find the exact thing that was completely wrong. There was actually, it looked to be, um, the problem was that, uh, not that they were, you guys were rotating it the wrong way or that the wrench was the wrong size, but rather the bolt has been uh, com uh, threaded wrong. It's, it's actually just been completely... Um, like scraped all over and it's no longer a useful bolt uh, and as soon as you identify the problem you find a new one among your vast collection of various scraps and pieces and begin to fasten that in and it looks like the pilot's uh, cockpit is good as new well as good as new as this beatdown ship could be okay see that that wasn't my fault the the, the bolt was broken i i am strong okay let's <laughs> guess you you are mighty and you have stripped it but uh here we shall replace ash you wanted to do something ash you were muted oh yeah yes thank you um i was just gonna say at this point um ash comes up to the main deck with everybody and joins them uh sort of still wiping the last little bits of sleep from his eyes it says I don't suppose any of y'all have anything to eat, do you? Um, nothing edible. I have, just, I have a broken bolt over here if you want to suck on that for a while, but nope. There is I a refrigerator that you guys know in the, uh, in the living space. Ash sort of... Never mind. Ash sort of grumbles at you still when you tell him to suck on a bolt, shakes his head and walks over to the living space and opens up the small refrigerator. Great. As you look up, a small like ceiling fan just actually like lazily turning overhead, probably not even good enough to actually cool you all down. Uh, you look, you open up the refrigerator uh, aboard the ship, looking out and seeing the, the gorgeous view of the planet below you, but to you, uh, a foreboding, foreboding place. Uh, and as you open up the refrigerator, uh... You look in, there's maybe three items in there. It's currently caked with a bit of grime along the outsides, uh, plenty of oil from handprints and such on the outside of the refrigerator. And as you look in, there's maybe, uh, it looks like there's a takeout box uh, that's currently open, not even closed, with looks maybe like a week old of stale pad thai, a quarter loaf of, Ugh. it seems like, slightly molded bread, a quarton of milk, uh, a quarter of a carton of milk, it looks like, and uh, that seems to be it. Ash sort of frowns, grumbles to himself, and reaches in for the piece of bread. Mm. I'm going to try to see if there's, like, any particular spot that's especially moldy and just sort of pick it out. Yeah, it looks like the end that's currently been open, that's where the mold is starting. So you just kind of cut that off and begin munching. It's also stale. Not a not a great piece of uh, piece of food that you've got here. But just as you all are kind of th just wandering, drifting through space, the light comes on in front of you, Tequila. And you see this, this like, almost like a, a Vegas-like strip of lights and chimes and noises begin to come on. As two figures appear on the screen, one female, one male, both human, and they crack a whip. <laughs> yeah! All right, cowboys and bounty hunters across the system, we have a new contract for you. First one there is the first one who gets paid. We got a new person for you as a face graces the screen of the new contract that seems to be broadcasted to anybody within the system. As you see this figure. We got an old veteran of the Titan Wars here. We got an old veteran named Card Isaacson. Last seen going towards the Antlia sector. More than likely going to Pioneer Hydra 2. And you are going to need to capture him dead or alive. And you know the drill. We need at least the right hand of him to prove his capture or death and for you to turn in the bounty. And you can't just give us random parts of hands. We know what people's fingerprints looks like. Please do not give us chopped <laughs> off hands that are not cards. All right, he is armed and dangerous, more than likely a veteran and former commander for the Separatists in the Patatan Wars, and he is known to frequent the Luck Star Bar and Saloon down in Hatcher 2. Best of luck. And the first one there gets the bounty. See ya. Boof. And it goes off. Looks like we've got us a new bounty. I will begin working on the engine. 
Call me if you need me. And Todd uh, scrapes against the walls as he tries to walk out of this room, but he's so clumsy. You got it, you got it. A little bit of stumbling later, and you definitely make your way toward the engine. Everything seems to be in working order now. Uh, and um, as the pilot, uh, why don't you go ahead and give me a survival check or intelligence check for me, uh, or history check for me, uh, Sil? Okay. I'll do... Your choice. History. Yeah. Not bad. 14. 14 is good enough. You know there's a warp gate nearby that will lead over to Antley and specifically to Hydra 2, that, uh, the planet that they're referencing. Um, you just need to pilot yourselves there. All right, you guys ready to go? Once he hooks up the engine. Mm-hmm. Will... Ash comes back into the main deck and um, looks around at everybody and gives a little nod and then goes over to sit down in the gunner chair. I'll start up the engines and pilot our way over. All right. You begin to slow arduous journey as the as the whole ship begins to shake and shudder like a muscle car <laughs> and begins to pilot through the skies of space. Um, as you go, you near the warp gate, a familiar sight, but no less awesome every single time that you look at it. And as you're about, mm, maybe about uh, uh, 50 clicks out or so, as you are uh, nearing the approach of the warp gate, a number of various uh, systems and uh, other things visible through its portal, as well as a number of other ships currently going through, you hear uh, some sort of comms come on the radio uh, for whoever wants to pick up uh, the communications device. You hear, uh, warp gate Taurus to Sirius X9. Uh, warp gate towards the Sirius X9. Do you copy? Anyone? Did I, okay, I'll do it. Hello, this is Sirius X9. Uh, we're gonna need to see your papers uh, for uh, entrance into the warp gate. Give us a moment. Um, do we do we have papers? I think you do. It's probably back by the engine. You guys have. Uh, if uh, someone wanted to go grab that. I'll just kind of look around. Hey, hey, Ash, can you see if we have papers in the back somewhere? Uh, I think it's over by the engine. Yeah, sure. Um, and Ash goes back to to look for papers. Perfect, sounds good. Uh, with your passive perception, Ash, it's no problem. You find them kind of strewn over a, a small desk where uh, it looks like Todd, if the android is currently hunched over, you kind of reach past them and, and you're able to get those papers, no problem. I want to check that it like is there a list of people on board? Uh, there's a uh, it's kind of like um, uh, think like uh, insurance for a car. <laughs> there is a, a name a registration for the owner, uh, which apparently it seems to be uh, registered to Sill. Um, uh, it has uh, the class of the Star Freighter as well as a number of other information. Not uh, passengers though. Great. Um, I'm gonna head back onto the deck and hand the papers to Sill and grumble something about, oh, I'm gonna uh, check in soon. And then head below deck. Fair until enough. Until we're passed through the gate. Sounds good. Uh, and then I'll go back on the comms. Yeah, I, I got the papers. Uh, did you want to see them? <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and put them on over the scanner. <laughs> okay. And I'll look around for the scanner and put it yep. on. You do so as it, that like familiar blue light just kind of scans over the documents one by one. And after about five minutes of silence from the comms, all right, uh, dead dog, you have clearance for the Antlia Sector Hydra 2. Uh, have a safe jump. Thank you, you too. Wait, why did I... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the movie. You too. <laughs> Shit. Oh, crap. Shit. Oh, F. <laughs> As you uh, pilot yourself in uh, towards that gigantic warp in space, this uh, amazing feat of engineering, um, and as you enter the pull of that blue kind of web of uh, spatial uh, warping, uh, you immediately feel that kind of stretching sensation, uh, the kind that would make most people nauseous, uh, as you feel yourselves being pulled through space. Um, and it's no time at all before as, you're, as you travel through, you are able to see the planet Hydra 2 and begin descending towards the spaceport there. As you all descend, 
and arrive at the spaceport above this very Hong Kong-esque futuristic city. Uh, it's um, particularly grimy as the first things that catch you as you all land your craft onto the spaceport. Uh, you hear a number of things, first of all. Ni hao, huan ying. Hello, and welcome to Hydra 2. Anyazeo. Hola. A number of languages play pre recorded greetings on the spaceport, where several dozen holograms of spaceport stewardesses politely bow and recite their programmed greeting. A few seem to be slightly malfunctioning. A number of ships are parked in the harbor, uh, but the spaceport is heavily rusted in places, and one landing pad is completely burned and scorched, leaving the impression that it hasn't been well tended to for at least a couple months, if not years. Uh, a few lazy workers seem to be flicking cigarette butts um, and a number of other things uh, into the air of the hazy air above Hydra 2's bustling commercial underbelly. But when they see you all, they lumber over to refuel your ship. And you guys have all landed on the docks here. As they go over and start refueling, looking about. Um, you guys don't know exactly where the bar is, but you guys can begin to look if you want. Everyone wants to give me perception checks. Uh, yeah. 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 Everyone? Yeah. Perception. That's a nice five. A nice five. That's completely all right. 12 for Todd. 12, okay. 18 for Ash. Ooh, Ooh nice. nice. Uh, as you guys begin kind of circling the streets and circling the, the area around um, uh, the, the kind of underbelly, you have to descend through at least several elevators, at least three, in three separate buildings as you kind of walk over these sky bridges and such. Just seeing the grimy city, some people, homeless people currently like holding up in little like uh, um, plastic sheets for tents. Um, and as you kind of make your way down toward the neon lights, uh, you get to the bottom floor and you see that about a mile away or so, a walking distance, is, uh, uh, the Luck Star Bar and Saloon. You find it on a directory. Well, seems like we found our way to the right place. Is this the establishment mentioned? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You look out at the bar, and uh, there seems to be a, uh, a pretty uh, burly-looking, well, not burly, a very muscular but lithe-looking female with these dark, dreaded hair currently behind her and fierce eyes kind of, like, peering out in front of her. Uh, she seems to be the bouncer in front of this establishment. And as you're kind of looking out at the the Luck, bar, uh, the Luck Star Bar and Saloon, um, it looks to be a relatively upscale place. Looks like... Maybe some uh, some important people would want to gather here. Hmm. Ash is going to sort of... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> Ash, Ash, you Ash go first sort of... and then Gavin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Ash is going to take out a really, truly, heinously filthy um, handkerchief from his pocket and attempt to wipe some of the, like grease stains and dirt from his brow and um he takes his hat and tips it uh down a little bit uh to cover his face he's trying to wipe some dust off of his jacket and appear a little less um disgusting <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh <clears throat> fair enough you Crewmates. do so uh, I guess, do you want to make a, I guess, with this, what, what would wiping your face with a dirty washcloth be? Uh, <laughs> let's make a charisma check, I guess. Why don't we do that? Oh, God. Let's make a charisma right, check. just up and down? Yeah. Let's just see, uh, let's All just see around. how you do. Uh, it's a 13. Hey, not bad. You know, as grimy as this washcloth is, Ash appears to be a few layers grimier. So it does happen to take off a, a couple layers of that filth. And you look better. Right. Crewmates, fear not. I know how to handle this sort of person. Uh, Todd walks up to the bouncer mm -hmm. and again has a, like a big stick cane, is limping, has like all these <laughs> different parts of dead androids attached to him to sort of build up his body, has one missing eye. And Daniel, I gave him a uh, proficiency in intimidation but 
I think it's like accidental intimidation. Uh -huh. Like he's just trying to talk, but because he looks so <laughs> fucking wild, uh -huh. like people are just it's an accidental intimidation check, I think. Is uh -huh. like what that is. So Amazing. I want him to intimidate, but he's not actually trying to intimidate. Okay, roll me that intimidate. Well, what first of all, what do you what do you say to them? What do you say? I, I really uh, want to know. Greetings. We come here for a job, and we would like entry into your establishment. Please move. Go ahead and make an intimidation check for me. As you see, the female bouncer kind of give you a once-over across your your very scuffed and put-together appearance, this patchwork uh, job of limbs and torso and legs and this uh, limp uh, with a surprisingly pristine and nice head missing an eye. Uh, that's a nine. That's a nine. <laughs> She looks you over, and she goes, I'm sorry, uh, we don't serve uh, uh, people of uh, below a certain income level here, so um, you're going to have to leave, my friend. It doesn't look Damn, like you lady. fit that, uh, that description. Hmm. Does Ash say that out loud? <laughs> no, God, no. Damn, no. lady, what the <laughs> fuck? Damn, <laughs> lady, that was rude as hell. No, uh, no. Tequila is going to put a handkerchief over their face, mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, bandit style, oh. and just try their best to sneak in. Okay, I need you to make a stealth check for me, please. Ooh. That is a 23. Yeah, Whoa, as as they are engaged, geez. you watch as your friend Dequila Dequila kind of navigates outside into a small little like dark corner of the alleyway and slips right into the bar unnoticed. Um, um I, uh, Todd turns away from the bartender, walks back to Ash and Sill. The bouncer, the bouncer. Uh Yeah, away from the bouncer, yeah. Uh and says well, it seems they do not like androids, so best one of you handle it. Wait, where's Tequila? Seems Where? like they already slipped in. Oh, uh, I didn't even see him. All right. Um, Let's go ahead and go over to Tequila. Uh, since Tequila, you are you are in there first. Um... <laughs> Fun, fun. Before we do so, though, how uh, how are you guys going to try and get into the bouncer? How are you going to convince them again as you guys are, have now failed the intimidation uh, check? Um, so as we're just uh, standing out there, when I see that the bouncer has sent Todd away for being, quote, below a certain level of income. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> um, Ash is going to reach into their, or to his uh, crossbody bag and take out a little... Um, like metallic ball um, that sort of fits right in the palm of his hand and um, sort of casually uh, like tosses it um, over towards the bouncer and it rolls um, end over end for a couple of feet until it's about, uh, I don't know, three feet away from the bouncer, at which point it sort of like clicks open and um, opens up and releases a huge cloud of fog. <laughs> As the smoke grenade goes off in the in the middle the bouncer goes <laughs> what the uh, begins like looking around i'm assuming you all have vacated the front of the bar so it doesn't look like <laughs> you just threw a thing so let's go ahead and make a slight yeah. of hand check to see if you Great. get noticed throwing a smoke bomb all right um ooh 18 plus 5 oh yeah my god oh, you guys you guys kind of vacate knowing the drill get really casual the smoke bomb goes off poof and giving you a window to be able to, uh, as the bouncer <coughs> coughs in the middle of the smoke. Yeah, and then we're gonna sneak. Oh gosh, go, go, go. All right, all right, and you guys, you guys uh, sneak on in past the bouncer. All right. As for you, Tequila, you enter the bar. A pretty bustling scene as you see a number of humans and android folk, but all of them rather well-to-do looking. Um, people look like they have a, a very deliberate reason for being here, and it's it's not because uh, they earn their way there, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, you see what seems to be um, 
this a person with a small tiara on whether or not that's a, a real tiara or not you see her in like a very elegant gown and a gown and tiara with a, a seemingly this very burly bodyguard uh, next to her uh, you also see uh, what seems to be a, a couple of well-to-do men currently playing pool in the front uh, an arcade system that's going uh, a number of uh, what looks to be political elite gathering in the corner um, and you see it the thing that kind of stops you as you enter in with your with your little handkerchief is you pause for a second as there is a lady singing beautiful like jazz uh, in front of like this live band in the front with this striking red hair and this beautiful fur collar which you cannot imagine how rare and expensive something like that is this days in a beautiful gown and she's currently just crooning and singing like uh, in front of this whole bar uh, there's an android serving drinks and this is the scene that you see all right, so the is just going to try to s continue to stealth around okay. and just scope out the area, just kind of keeping to the shadows and to the like sides of the walls. Okay, sounds trying good. Trying not to get into the mix and just trying to get a and trying to find sure. their target. There's dim enough lighting in this bar where you can kind of you know move past shoulders and and more like blend in the crowd rather than like completely hide, if that makes sense. You kind of blend into the, just the regular faces, everyone. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check for me as you're looking out. Uh, that's an eight. An eight, all right. Uh, yeah, you're not seeing much as you're still kind of like making your way through the bar uh, as you're kind of just kind of looking out and uh, we'll come back to you as your friends kind of enter through the door. Uh, a little bit of fog just currently like seeping in from the doorway as you all close the door behind you and look out at this gorgeous scene. Yeah, I also want to be scanning the room for um, Card if I see him around. Sounds good. If or, anyone wants um, to make uh, perception checks for me, you can. Uh, what's up, Ash? Yeah, so I'm looking for Card and then I'm also looking for like... Anybody that looks like they would be, like, associating with somebody like that, like, other people that seem, like, explicitly hmm. veteran or, um, like, a little more shady than the rest of the crowd. Sure. Anybody that seems out of place. Sure, you got it. Go to make a perception check for me. Does anyone else want to join Ash on that perception check? Uh, um, sure. I, I won't, because I'm going to be going up to the uh, Android bartender. Yeah, absolutely, you can. Uh, as you pull up a seat, there seems to be uh, two humans um, currently occupying some of the bar stools, but there is an open one at, over at the right. I try to sit down. <laughs> uh, of course, you do, as you see the android kind of looking over at you and go, Oh, hello, friend. Greetings, unit. Greetings. Um, I am on the lookout for a, um, a particular person uh, by the name of... Daniel, what's his name again? Uh, Card. Card Isaacson. Card Isaacson. Ah, yes. He is a regular here. Um, I'm afraid that I'm not at liberty to speak of my customers' names and their information without at least some sort of compensation, my friend. <laughs> ah, censorship programming has been installed in oh, UIC. Oh, no, no, no. Mm. Actually, it's something called loyalty. I'm actually the one who owns this bar. You are telling me you, an android, own this bar? Indeed. Of your own free will? <laughs> Indeed. It is of my own volition. In fact, it may be something of a wish. That is where the name comes from. Todd is processing and like computing and staring at the wall and just computing. <laughs> and that happens for a little bit, so you guys can do your perception. <laughs> it was a 13 for me. 13, Ash. It was an 8 for me. An 8. For you two, you kind of scope out the group. You don't see Card or anyone that, that fits that description of the kind of hat-wearing, rugged, um, kind of Old West-looking commander and veteran. Um, you do see uh, a couple of figures that do strike you, Ash. Uh, number one is the the lady with the tiara and the bodyguard um she's standing in a manner where it looks like she's concealing a weapon underneath her gown um mm. the bodyguard very clearly has a weapon on him um there's there's something where it, like it looks they're trying to appear casual but you're noticing that they're kind of they're sweeping the scene as well in a, in a similar mm. fashion and you notice that they like 
find you all and track you all by eye pretty quickly.、Mm. On top of that, you actually notice a rare sight. Back in the corner of the room, there are two、uh, women outfitted in full space gear in very, very tight military wear,、uh, red and gold, which is the colors of the international,、uh, the Interstellar Federation of Nations, the IFN. There are actually two IFN enforcers in the back of this bar,、um, and you notice that for certain. Both of them armed, but off duty. It looks like. Great. When Ash sees those two enforcers, the color like drains out of his face,、um, and he'll turn to Sill and gesture over towards the lady with her bodyguard and say, "Something tells me we're not the first people to arrive." Okay. Looking for. Yeah. He's standing funny. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna walk around and like look at people, but like make it. I don't know that it's obvious, but like obvious to other people that I'm looking at them. Okay, sure. And, like, nope, that's not the person. That's not the person. <laughs> and, and, and like going like、yeah. table by table. Sure.、Basically. Sure.、Uh, go. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Well, well this will be an extended. This will be an extended perception check. Oh, that, uh, that was my. Yeah, that was your. That was your so eight. Bad, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. As、yeah. you're going around, you're you're not really tying faces. A couple people like look at you and be like, and are like, "Excuse me, this is a private matter. Can you please fuck、uh, off?" Sorry. Sorry. I work here. Yeah. Thank、um, you. And I just walk away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you catch a you catch a, a couple of、uh, conversations overhead. You hear、uh, the there's a, a couple of dignitaries.、Uh, they appear to be from、um, the、uh, Kepler 22B Embassy,、uh, and they're talking about these trade routes, talking about pirates currently stalking the frontier.、Um, and the, and then you hear another group of them talking about sponsoring colonists from the IFN to forcibly like displace people in the frontier. There's some pretty fucked like conversations going on as you're passing around the groups, but. You're not able to lock on to Card,、uh, at least no one that looks like him. But the thing that kind of draws you is every once in a while, with your eight perception, you'll get incredibly distracted by、uh, the jazz singer, the lady. She's just like incredibly、yeah. beautiful,、uh, and her singing is like like mesmerizing. Like a, a couple times, you find yourself like just kind of like pausing and not looking at anyone and just staring at her, and then and then you kind of shake yourself and go around and, and walk again. Yep. All right.、Uh, Uh, Dakila, what are you doing? You've been kind of stalking the edges for a while now.、Uh, is there anything that you wanted to do? No, just continuing to scan the room, trying to find our target. Okay,、That's、sounds good. On a mission. Sure. After about five minutes or so, the the jazz number ends, and、uh, the lady gives a bow and she says, "Thank you, thank you so much for all of your patronage and for letting us play here.、Um, I I just feel so honored." Uh, and she gives a little bow, and、uh, she kind of tucks something、uh, behind her ear, and then goes back、uh, over toward the curtain, and, and lightly before the band is like tuning their kits.、Um, and go on and give me a, a perception check, y'all. This is the second one now that this you guys are、uh, kind of in the space. Everyone. And, yeah, everyone. Since everyone's kind of posted all around. Fourteen. Nineteen.、Mm. Okay. Sixteen. Sounds good.、Uh, Uh, as you are processing,、uh, so everyone who got above a f-、uh, of a sixteen, so sixteen and above,、uh, you catch、um, as Scarlet goes back, or the the red haired、uh, singer goes back、uh, and peeks around the curtain. There is a person behind there that she briefly talks to, takes something out of her ear, and then like gives it to that person.、Um, no one is able to make out the figure really, except for you, Ash. You're able to see a weathered face behind the curtain and gray hair. Hmm. Um. Behind the jazz band. Great. Am I still standing near anybody, or have we sort of? Uh,、out? you can. You guys are a little spread out, but you could begin to gather your、uh, compatriots. Um. Okay. I want to glance over at the uh the woman in the tiara and her bodyguard. Are they still like really? Tracking my movement.、Um, they've taken notice of you all, but they don't seem to have noticed what you guys have noticed with the、uh, the thing. They don't look like their mannerisms have changed. They look like they're still scoping the room for their target. Okay, great, great. I'm gonna try to gather、um, everybody as subtly as I can. Okay.、Um, and once we're、uh, together, at least still in tequila. I don't know if Todd is.、Uh, Still computing. No, <laughs> <laughs>、yeah. Todd's at the bar. You can see Todd at the bar. <laughs> um, great. Okay. Well, 
he's done, <laughs> he's done computing. He know he notices. Okay, no longer Goodbye. the rainbow wheel of death. <laughs> Goodbye, unit. Uh, I will think long and hard about this conversation. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Well, best of luck to you to find your purpose. And you. By and the way, did you want to drink? Mm. We do have quite good oil here for androids. Hmm. Yes. I'll pound one real quick. Indeed. <laughs> and I do so, and I f f forget to pay. That will be three Jinza. Ah. Yes. Do I have three Jinza? I, are you going to open a tab and later pay? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, unit. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> Uh, and I stand up and probably just like knock over the chair. Right. As, as you, you as you go and you go to like go away, the android kind of in a slightly lower voice goes, "I have memorized your serial number. I hope you pay." And as you oh, begin God. to walk off, oh dear God! <laughs> yeah, I join y'all. Sounds good. Great. Um, once we're all together. Hey, so um, did you all notice the person behind the curtain? Yep. Yes. I think that might. I think that just might be our man, but uh, and Ash sort of like gestures facially towards the woman in the tiara and her bodyguard. But I think we're being watched. Um, do you think some of y'all could create some sort of a diversion, go up and talk to them or something, so I can have a chance to sneak back there and see what's going on? Um, yeah, I, I can probably take care of that. Right. You know, okay. it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just go up and start a conversation or whatever you want. Uh, I just need him not to be looking at me. Yeah. Um, I, I think I got it. Great. Then, uh, what do you say after that we, uh, meet out around back? Gotcha. Okay. Can you handle this man by yourself? <laughs> Ash gives a little bit of a smirk, uh, and the tips of his right fingers are like twitching a little bit, and he looks at Todd and says, I wouldn't be too worried about me, friend. I am not worried. A simple question. But Ash nods. I understand. Um, I'm gonna just, like, take off my backpack and, like, are we at a table or are we Uh, standing? right now you guys, you guys have, like, kind of st stood in a corner and are kind of gathering and talking. Um, and you guys d seem to have some, uh, time. You're not at a table. You could get one if you wanted, I guess. I, it's fine. Um, I'm gonna take off my backpack and lean down and press a couple buttons on the outside. And oh. it starts unfolding and animates and it becomes a four-legged, like, spider-like construct and i'm gonna just Whoa. say okay spud nick i i need you to sneak over to the you see that woman in the dress and the tiara right i need you to when i when i give you the signal right i don't know what the signal is but we'll work on it i need you to just run under her dress or just do, go go crazy go cause a distraction okay as I, as I hear those instructions, I am going to hide so I can maybe give back up later on. You got it. For those two, got it. And then looking around, I'm like, he's going to go hide around the crowd and stuff. Um, and then I'm going to look around and see the, like, the space ladies, right? And I'm mm. going to go over to their table and I was like, oh, excuse me. Um, where did you get those outfits? Those are really nice. And like, oh. start up a whole conversation with them, and then somehow signal them my guy to start creating distraction. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're uh, we're part of the fleet. Actually, we just kind of stopped by the system because I heard the the drinks here are amazing. You know, they have fresh tomato juice from Mars oh, really? of all things. Can from you imagine Mars. a Bloody wow. Mary with real tomato juice? Anyways, oh. yeah. It's been a while since I. Never mind. Um. Yeah, like this this bar looks like it's a very nice place. Like no distractions or anything, right? Yeah, it's very chill, <laughs> very 
Uh huh. I mean, no attack, sure. Yeah. They look a little bit confused as they're looking at the, between the two of themselves. Um. All right, Ash, what are you doing? As your friends have now kind of set up. Uh, and also, uh, uh, Todd, what are you doing? Hmm. Are we at a table now? Uh, you can find a table now if you wanted. Yes. Um, I'm just gonna sit at a table and order more oil shots. Okay, sounds good. You do so. They are yeah. delicious, by the way. Just incredible. Texture, Fuck yeah. great. Nice. Premium um, oil. Ash, as you're going back though, uh, the singer is gone. You've noticed that she, when you guys were talking, uh, she somehow is no longer on stage. It's just the jazz band currently playing like low instrumental sax, um, and a couple of like small sets, but she is nowhere to be seen. Um. No worries. I'm going to sort of make my way over towards the curtain that leads to the back backstage area, um, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be sort of lingering, waiting for the opportune moment to slip in, hopefully undetected. Sounds good. Go to make a perception check for me, please. 16. 16. That's pretty good. You hear, card, please, you have to get off world. They can't know that you're here with me. It's going to be a problem for you, and you know that your name is out there already. Honey, I'm not going anywhere without you. The two of us, we make our way to Europa, and we start a new life there. I'll take a new name. We can find you a jazz club to own. It doesn't have to be like this, right? My past will never stop hunting me down. And so we need to make the move now, right? You pack your bags. And we go, now? Right now. Mm. Very interesting. And that, that's coming from behind the curtain? Coming from behind the curtain. Okay, I'm, I'm still, I'm gonna wait though. Okay, you hear a of a slamming door and then someone just wrapping their foot, like a light tapping of a foot. One of the jazz members kind of sees you standing there. Um, uh, you do know that Scarlet's going to take visitors afterwards uh, once the set's done. Oh, I'm just trying to get a better look at your instrumentation, friend. Oh, oh that's great. Yeah, I have, uh, I have the hi-hat tuned down pretty well. Uh, we actually got these imported from uh, uh, from Mars, if you believe it or not. Pretty pretty fancy stuff that this, uh, the Android has. It's nice. I like <laughs> to play sets here. Anyway, uh, sorry. <clears throat> goes back to, to as the band leader kind of snaps his fingers and he goes back to tsk, 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 tsk. Right, what are you guys doing i'm gonna subtly keep interjecting synonyms for um a signal for my freaking droid to attack but he's not doing it oh is, is, is he attacking now um, i want to cause a distraction yeah you got it. All right, I need you to make an attack with your seal defender against uh <laughs> against this person. 12 to hit. 12 to hit. A 12 does hit. All right. And then I want him to attack and then run away and try to just Go All right, crazy. boom, it swipes out. Ah! You hear the that, that lady go crazy and just kind of as it like slashes across, deal damage, and you watch as the bodyguard like immediately swoops around, draws a gun as uh, everyone immediately like perks up as soon as like the gun is drawn and someone gets, someone yells in the bar, get down, boom, and the shot goes off, ting, uh, uh, just like slamming into the table and not hitting your defender for a moment. All right, I need you guys to roll initiative. Oh God. <laughs> Here we go. And this is where y'all are at. Uh, let me let me go ahead and place you guys where where you guys said you were across the bar. So Sil, you were over here by the by the IFN enforcers. Oh my god. Uh, Tequila, you said you were nearby for backup. Uh, you're over here by a, a table, right? Um, Todd's Todd's at it. Yeah, Todd's at a table drinking. Yeah, let's say you're let's say you're over here. That probably makes the most sense. Um, Great. Yeah. Ash, you are by. Uh, you're by here, uh, by the curtain. Um, I think that's it. We just need your steel defender, right? Yeah. Woo! All okay. right, y'all. Holy crap. Right over here. Okay. Okay, initiative scores. 
Uh, uh eight, they're in eight the for Todd. Oh, they're in the they're in the chat. Got it. Lovely. They're roll twenty. Okay, great. Boom. Okay, okay, <laughs> sounds good. Um whoops. Um Okay, so uh Ash is a fourteen. Um, yes. Ash is a fourteen. Tequila is a six. Uh, my favorite kind of alcohol. Um, <laughs> Todd is an eight. And Syl, you're seventeen. Nice stuff. Cool. Um. Uh. Okay. Yes. Uh. All right. And then, uh, everyone. <laughs> Which token is tequila on here? Is it uh, the orange one? Uh, tequila is the orange one, yes. This right. one right here? Yeah, you should all That's be able to see your names, yeah. So tequila's over here, Sil is over here, cool. uh, Ash is right here, you are by the table right here, and then, uh, Great. the defender's over here, slashing away at this, uh, at this poor, uh, poor lady. Got it. Alright, Sil, you're up first. Card is on deck. Um, I'm gonna look at the military ladies. I'm like, oh my god, what's happening over there? Go, go look. What? The, um, the two of them immediately sit up. It's like, oh shit! And the two of them, like, uh, one of them pulls out a revolver. One of them pulls out what looks to be like probably a laser pistol. And like, they slam on their heads and and they say, get down! Uh, as they say, put your hands up in the air. We're IFN. And as they like are both aiming over uh like this banister, the two of them kind of running over, and immediately like locking eyes with the bodyguard. Uh, still. Uh, is that that's your uh, that's your free action to say that? Wait, they're attacking us? No, they're not attacking you. They're attacking oh, okay. the uh, bodyguard. They're they're looking at the guy who just shot his gun oh, okay, in okay. the middle of yeah, the yeah. of the square. Uh, that that's a free action. Okay. Um, action. I'm gonna I'm gonna take out my gun. Okay. I'm over there too. Um, is there any source of light? Any sort? Yes, it's dim light in here. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of different light sources. The uh, lamps. Like, um, yeah. I'm gonna take out my revolver. And I'm like ah, good, uh, and I'm gonna shoot, but I'm gonna purposely aim up and try to hit a light source. And try oh. To, like, arcs and go, go crazy and stuff. Oh, I see. Okay, if you want to aim, there is a light source currently uh, over at the top of the uh, uh, at the top of the room. Sorry, the singer is uh, off uh, off stage right now. Um, yeah, there's a there's a light source like literally right above where the mic is and a little bit in front of where the jazz band is yeah, Go ahead and roll to hit Um, damn uh, 12 to hit Ooh. 12 to hit hits. It's a light bulb. It's not going anywhere as you shoot and you don't even need to roll damage from me It the light bulb shatters and everybody starts screaming and going crazy as the android is like please everyone calm down I'm going to call the authorities please everyone as someone like smashes a glass into his face and a couple of people are like the iPhone are now like taking their sh their shots over at this guy as uh, the bodyguard is like wanting to move in another position um, it is chaos now absolute chaos yeah. card you are up. oh um, sorry um, my steel defender I'm mean, just yes. gonna full action is gonna run towards the pool table you got it. I so the tick, 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 runs over to the pool table. It can roll and run underneath if you want. Oh, you can go 40 feet. Okay. Yeah, yeah it can go 40 feet. Like, full on. All right, just skitters. Just full on skitters. Yeah. You got it. All right. Um. All right. Sounds good. Uh. All right. So that's that turn. I'm not gonna say what happens. Uh. Ash. The only thing that you hear is uh. You hear in the background. Fuck. And then uh. Immediately a door like slam open. And uh, you hear like rapid footsteps, Ash, from behind the curtain. Shit, um, I'm gonna slip behind the curtain and see what's going on. Boom. Okay, sounds good. Uh, all right. So as you go back behind the curtain, um, here, let me reveal what you see. You see a bewildered uh, Scarlet holding bags, going, "Huh?" Just kind of like holding and just like uh, unsure of what happened as you enter into that room. This door over here on the right is currently swinging. Um, as if someone just ran through it. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna... I'll give chase. Alright, sounds good, sounds good. Alright, uh, go ahead and run your full movement, please. Um... I'm not seeing, like, squares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, uh, you know what I mean? oh, oh, I see, I see, I see. Um, I don't want to put squares because they're ugly, but I'll, I'll put on... <laughs> yeah, I understand. Squares. No, it's okay. I yeah. Just however far, um, no, I think... Here, let's do... 
let's do this. How's that look? Yeah, that's fine. However far, however oh, far great. thirty yeah. feet is great. sure. Five, sure. ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Perfect. So you're in there. Thirty. All right. As you look open, uh, you're you're here. Uh, go to make a quick uh, perception check with your action for me. If you want to see where card went, there's a bunch of doors all um, around this area. Just a bunch. Twenty. 23. My god, this door over here is, light, is lightly swinging yeah. as well, over down here. There seems to be like a boom box right. and a different things, um, yeah, of all the doors that you're seeing. All right, Ash, that's your turn? Um, uh, well, I haven't taken an action yet, That right? was your I action just... to perceive. Oh, I see, okay, got it. Cool. Then, yeah, that's it for me. All right, sounds good. Or, I'm gonna, wait, can I, can I free action call something out? Absolutely. Um, okay, it's like sort of in the direction of the door as loudly as I can. I'm gonna yell, Card! You get back here or your girlfriend's getting shot! Ooh. Go ahead and make a, uh, intimidation or persuasion check for me. Okay. That's I will good. do that. That's so um, good. It's a 19! Oh! Plus oh. zero, too, which is like a crazy roll. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, you call that out, and you watch as this door swings slightly open. Todd, you are up. Tequila, you're on deck. Why do they never tell me when it is time to shoot? Okay. Um, and now, so no one has fired upon our folks. Either, no, right? no one has fired on y'all. People are fi currently firing over at this guy over here who, ha who drew his gun first, uh, according to everyone else's knowledge. Right. And uh, just for my brain, these blue people, those are just like people at the bar and the red and gray, that's IFN? Yeah, so the, IF, the IFN are uh, these two up here. Uh, and then uh, the, oh, okay. these two seem to be a, a pair of bounty hunters that are also scoping the area for card. Uh, the rest is just civilians. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna run over to this dude. Okay. Um, oh. And I'm gonna uh, attempt to grapple him. Oh, okay. All right, go to make a strength check for me, please. An athletics check. He's going to try and get out of it. Ten. Ten. Uh, he rolled a natural 17. As, he, as you go to, like, Ooh. grasp around him, he, boom, like, slams one of your mechanical arms away, stares dead at you, and draws a baton from his waist that begins to crackle with electricity. He says, we got that fucking bounty, all right? Not you. And he goes to, uh, he's going to go to, to strike you. All right, Todd, that's okay. your, uh, that's your action to grapple, to attempt that's to grapple. That's my action, uh-huh. And that will be it for me. Jesus. All yeah, right. that's it for me. Sounds. <laughs> I'm just standing there good. and I say, you are mistaken. Okay. All right. Tequila, you are up. All right. Uh... Tequila's gonna run this way. Mm -hmm. Was thinking about going uh, and giving chase as well, but then sees that Todd is in trouble. Roll rolls their eyes a little bit, and then bonus action hide. Okay, bonus action hide. Go and roll a cell check for me, please. That is with the light now gone from that central area. I'll allow it. It's like some dim light that you can get some uh, a little bit of hidden there so in the chaos. Fifteen. Fifteen. That's okay. All right. We'll, uh, uh, actually, and if I could expend one of my psionic dice, I'm going to add a d6 to that. Yes, you can. Please do. Uh, and that is five, so that's a perfect dirty 20. Dirty 20. You are hidden. You are hidden. And then I am going... As this uh, cloak of, like, almost like this, like, uh... It's almost like a heat wave when you watch this, like, like the light distorts around someone. Your psionic abilities distort, like, the image around you to make you more hidden. And then I am going to raise my hand, and as I bring it down like I'm throwing something and let go, mm -hmm. I am going to use one of my sidekick blades and attack this guy right now. Alright, alright. Uh, his distance from you right now is uh, 30 feet, so it's going to be a disadvantage, I think. Uh, but because uh, you're hidden, it's going to be at, at advantage, so it's just a straight roll. Uh, but I had uh, my... Range oh, is 60 feet. You're arranged with the psionic blades at 60 feet. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, yes, sir. As uh, What does your blade look like as you throw it out and kind of manifesting it in your mind and woof, it appears? What does it look like? It 
looks like a bit kind of like a tomahawk but with a slightly bigger blade that looks like it's kind of used for like chopping meat specifically mm. oh. interesting whoa like a like a butcher's knife kind of uh yeah but more like a a butcher's axe a butcher's yeah, like a hunting axe. axe like a hunting axe as if tomahawk kind of like like just twirls in the air boom and slam go ahead and roll your attack to him attack to hit and you get sneak attack because you're hidden. Yes, that is a 13 to hit. 13 hits. Roll damage, please. Nice. That is 10 damage. 10, nice. As you do 10 damage as this, this like cleaving ass boom, embeds itself in him. Todd, you see it as he, as he like immediately like, ugh, like turns back as if he's just been stabbed in the chest. But when he looks down, there is no wound there. As he looks like he's sweating now, like just like, he looks like he's been severely injured, but his body physically hasn't. All right, Tequila, mm -hmm. that was your, uh, your action and your bonus action. Any yep, other movement? It's my turn. And your nope. turn. All right, now everyone. There is chaos as an eruption of screams just goes about. People just start bolting out of the door, just poof, just immediately careening out of the door where they can. Uh, these um, these dignitaries actually like drop down and begin to hide underneath the table over here. Uh, this girl also begins to poof, just sprint out. Uh, people just like just going all over the place, just absolutely mad and crazy, um, as they are just kind of sprinting, trying to get out of this bar as fast as possible. Um, except for the IFN enforcers, who one of them comes up right up near you and then uh, draws her weapon. It's like, this is your last chance! Stand down or we will shoot! And she's ready in action. Same thing with her superior commander, who jumps behind the table, pulls out a rifle, uh, and it, it pats uh, the android on the shoulder. Sorry, fellow, you might want to get down. And she kind of aims up with their hunting rifle over at them and screams something of a similar manner as they both ready their actions. All right. This guy, he goes to baton you. 301. Okay. Oh, he's going to make a multi-attack on you? Do your word. The first one is a... My god. It's a 23 to hit and a, a 20 to hit. Both hit. As, the, as it clubs you. Tung, tung, and they do... It does 16 points of bludgeoning damage. As both slam. But as soon as he, he hits you and shows no signs of backing down, the, the two IFN enforcers poof, poof, immediately release their shots. Um, this one... Uh, is an 11 hit. 11 just hits. That's nine points of damage to him. As boom, he takes a shot in the shoulder, uh, and then she is trying to take a shot at you as well. Uh, that's 19 to hit. That hits as well. That's seven piercing damage. As both of those rack, and he does not look good, uh, even though he's gotten two good shots on you. Dang. All right, all right. Uh, this woman, she kind of limping now from the cut, is like frantically looking around around the pool table for whatever gave her that cut, that spider-like bot. All right, Sil, it's back to you. You're up. I'm gonna scream in terror, and I'm gonna like go over <laughs> here. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll stay right here for now. Okay. Actually, no, I'll only like, go up here and I'll crouch behind okay. the stage. Sounds good. Um, and then with my bonus action, I'm gonna start like saying over and over again one one zero one one zero 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 one one zero like in binary. Okay. And my guy is gonna run up. By me. Uh huh. And he's that's as far as he can run. All right, kind of sounds good. As he kind of like beeps and boops a little as he comes over towards your direction. You also all uh, hear Ash yell out, Guard, come back! Or you're, or I'm going to kill your girlfriend, basically. Uh, <laughs> or your girlfriend, or your little girl's going to die. <laughs> um, you hear that. And then oh. with my action, I'm going to uh, just try to get cover and hide, okay. I guess. Or not really hide, but just Perfect. stay there. Sounds good. Next up. So it's everybody hard. in the bar hears that? Uh, no, not everybody. It's just past the curtain. So because because uh, they were by the curtain, Tequila and uh, okay. Tequila and Sil hear that. Um, you're right. not you're not sure if the IFN officer heard it. You're okay. not sure. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Cool. With that, the door lightly opens, and you see the figure stand in through the door, kind of come in, and he he has hands. One on his hip, but his other hand up. Listen, I don't want no trouble. You leave her alone. I'll pay whatever price you need. 
not a price that I'm looking for, Card. I think you know how this goes down. Nothing has to happen. She doesn't have to get hurt. That little pretty voice of hers is going to be just fine. But I'm going to need you to drop your weapon. I got men on the other side of that door with hands on her already. As soon as I give the signal, she's done for. Hell yeah. Well, clearly, you don't know my lady as well as uh, I do. Ash, you turn around and you see Scarlet currently has a bottle over her head and she is going down to slam oh, on God. you, which you did not notice because oh, she did not take her turn. So. She makes her attack. Oh my god, that's a natural 19. It is an imp imp improvised these weapon. Rolls. Yeah, these rolls. Uh, it's only uh, four damage, Ash. As she breaks the bottle over her head, she says, Scarlet, now! And she begins running uh, over this way. You have an opportunity attack if you want. Um, Against Scarlet? Against Scarlet, this is correct. Um, Can I try to just like grapple her? Yeah, you or absolutely do I have to... could. Okay, great. I'm gonna try to grab her, like, around the waist. Sure, sounds good. Go to make an athletics check. This is gonna be, uh, against her, uh, acrobatics or athletics. Great. Um, hang on. Let me see what my bonuses are. Uh, it's a 15. 15. Oh, 15! Nice. She rolls a 10. As you grab her by the collar of her dress and rip her back, the fur ripping and parts of the gown ripping, and you get her arm around her neck, and, just, and uh, that's where you are in the position as Card yells out toward her. Great. All right. And he has his, he's gone up at you. Uh, it is now your turn, Ash. What are you doing? Um, okay, I'm gonna draw my pistol and I'm, since I have my arm around her neck, I'm gonna point the pistol at her head. Okay. And I'm gonna say, last chance card, drop your weapon. You don't have to do this. He looks over at Scarlet, looks over at you. He goes to lower the gun. Said drop it. On the ground. He looks over at Scarlet. Sorry, honey. He does not drop the weapon, Ash. Ooh. Um. Shit, I'm gonna... I'm gonna shoot her. You're gonna shoot her. Okay. Uh, I think it's I think it's stupid that you know you have her your her your gun at her head, so it's not a disadvantage. It's an advantage. Okay. Uh, you're rolling with advantage, and you're going to shoot. Okay. Well, good thing I have advantage because that was a two. Oh. Oh, great. And that's a fifteen plus seven is 15. twenty-two. Yeah, that hits. Roll damage. Great. This is with your um, revolver. As boom. Yeah. Bang. Sorry, let me find a D. No, you're good, you're good. Six, six, twelve, three is fifteen. And then I think I maybe have, like, abilities that let me shoot again. Uh, yes. Wait, how much damage did you do? Fifteen. She collapses. She's dead. Oh, oh my As she God. collapses onto the floor and <laughs> slumps down, a card slams the door behind him into the alleyway. Um, and then can I use my movement to follow him? Uh, you absolutely could. All right, I'm gonna do it. Sounds good, sounds good. Um, but, but first I'm gonna yell, um, well, no, I'm not. I'm just gonna follow him. Okay, you're just gonna go follow him. You can use your movement, 30 feet. 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, so you're now out in the alleyway. Uh, and that, that right there in the door, uh, that is where Card is. So, uh, hold on. Uh, as you guys are both basically like on top of each other now in the alleyway. Oh, please let me reveal. There we um, go. There we go. That's where so we're like on. on top of each other. Yeah. Uh, well, you're you're right next to him. You're right in the door as you slam into him. As he's he's literally right there. Okay. Um. Oof. Okay, and that's the end of your turn because you use your action yeah. bonus action. All right. Yep. Okay. Todd, <clears throat> you're up. Tequila's on uh, deck. How's this dude? How's this dude in front of me? Looking? You guys hear in the in the behind. Uh, uh, you hear muffled bang. Just a mm, gunshot ring. Gunshot. Out. Yeah. Mm. Um. How's this dude in front of me looking? Uh, he's looking rough, like very bad. Like very bad. <laughs> like like pretty damn bad. Yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. 
I'm gonna take my... I, P Todd pulls out his, or pulls up his uh, walking cane, but then grabs it sort of like a quarter staff and pulls back and swings wide on this guy. All right. Smacks him. Roll the hit, please. Uh, 19. That hits. Roll damage. Come on, good damage. Uh, seven bludgeoning. Seven? How do you want to do this? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I'm pulling, I'm pulling the staff back as he's sort of like leaning on one side, standing up. He swings it back and smacks this guy across the like neck in a way that he just spins and then falls down dead. Oh, wow. All spins right. Spins in place. Um, and then I am going to use my bonus action to uh, use Second Wind and heal up because uh, that hit from before was nasty. Sounds good. He collapses um, so to the ground. Boom. From the strike. Nice. Um, that's going to be nine hit points that I'm getting back from Second Wind. And then I am going to pursue the gunshot. All right. And sounds I good. I think with my 30 feet... I can get just in that door. Okay, sounds good. So I end up as you right run there. there. Uh, oh, nice. As you and you see, a, uh, currently the redheaded jazz singing woman, just blood pooling on the ground beneath her head, very clearly dead. And out in the corridor, you see uh, Ash currently like just right neck and neck, just five feet away from Card. Uh, if, if Todd had a face, it would be filled with shock. Uh, <laughs> so much shot. He he Tequila. Says, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. What's up, Todd? Go for it. Go for it. Uh, Ash? Ash? And that's what? It. Tequila. <laughs> oh, do you respond? <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. So I hear you on the other side of that door. Okay. All right. So, Ash, Ash, what? And then, Tequila, you are now up. All right. I'm going to... I've noticed the gunshot, and I see... Todd moves, so I'm just gonna look at Syl and go, alright, let's get moving. And then rush in my full 30. Okay. And then I can't see anything beyond this door. Uh, the door is probably slightly ajar. Uh, it'll give Card cover, uh, uh, but uh, you can slightly see the silhouette of Card behind Ash. It's pretty hard, though. Like, you're trying to see between, like, the shoulder and the stuff, and you're seeing, like, like Ash and, like, another man basically tussling out in the, in the, in the alleyway. Gotcha. All right, let's see. What can I do? I think I'm going to bonus action dash so I can also get mixed up in this fray. Okay, bonus action dash. Like you right here. Uh. Or That's like... behind the door and technically in the wall, and you can't pass through uh, Ash. You pass through uh, uh, your friend already, um, the robot, uh, gotcha. and you can pass through one character. So you can the closest you can get is right there behind Ash. Yeah, currently gotcha. you're blocking the door. Okay, and then does this give me a better? Uh, yeah, it gives you slightly better better sight. Uh, that was your bonus action to dash. You said. Yes. So you have your action. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to attack. Is that a disadvantage? Um, or... not a disadvantage. He just has cover. Okay. Right now with the door and at, he has like three quarters cover. Yeah. So yeah, All right. I'll take that I'm into going, account. Yeah, I'm going to do another psychic tomahawk throw. Okay, sounds good. Make that attack. That is a twenty-one to hit. Twenty-one hits for sure. Roll damage. Uh, sneak attack as Ashes is, is uh, by you. Awesome. That is twenty-four points of damage. Woo! Whoa! Twenty-four. As you lob Holy it, you crap. actually slam him right in the middle of the forehead with your psychic blade, and for a second he goes into like this like seizure of shock as his whole body just goes rigid and. <laughs> As he like starts shaking and goes down as you as he peers out you see there is like blood trickling from his right nostril now as he looks out and is breathing hard 
and that <sighs> ends my turn. <sighs> <sighs> All right, everyone goes. There's chaos as this like whole like Western style shootout is going out in the bar. Bing, ting, ting. Just everyone is shooting. Other people are screaming and running. Uh, a lot of the guests and patrons at this point have all fled, or at the doors. Um, uh, and uh, uh, the IFN, uh, they are currently basically just holding the situation as they are now like looking out and kind of. Um, the uh, the TR lady is also running. Um, uh, the IFN are some of them in pursuit. This one is staying behind just to like. Like keep watch over the scenario, um, and that's that's them. Sill, this is you. As your your head is ducking under bullets flying over your over your head, glass bottles and liquor shattering with the uh, with the bullets just kind of careening and just whizzing over your head and your little spider bot there. Uh, what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna look over to my bot and I'm like try to hide it from the agent, and I'm gonna just like tap my chest, and it will my bot will fold back into a backpack style. Okay. Contraption is like, oh, there's my backpack. I pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> that was ten feet. So she can't <laughs> hear you over the sound of gunshots. They have much more pressing things than a robot that you have uh, on your on your I back. Will, I will run up to there. Sounds good. I'll say your steel defender is now on your bag, uh, on your back. Great, yep. lovely. And that's the end of your turn. You have your action still, um, or was it your action to call your steel defender back? No, that was, back, uh, that was a bonus action. I'll, cool. I'll action dash and just get in. Sounds here. good. You get in the fray. All, all of you now by card. Uh, and you see the dead body of the jazz singer, uh, blood currently pooling out uh, beneath her. It yeah. is now card's turn. Card, uh, just kind of breathing hard and looking at all of you, just kind of circling around him like angry hawks. Uh, he, <laughs> holding his head, and you watch as the, the like, right nostrils bleeding, he says, None of y'all know what any of it was like, what we had to do in that war. Y'all just want a fucking bounty. Bunch of mutts is what you are. He's gonna disengage with his action from all of you from combat and he's gonna run away. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Ash, you can kind of see him around the corner. As you see from around the alleyway, a shadowy figure appears out of the shadows mm -hmm. briefly. Oh. A black trench coat <clears throat> and silver hair um, with. It, it, uh, you're not quite sure. It's a, for the briefest flash. It moves almost at superhuman speed. As you watch, as it arrives, card. You hear him go uh, uh, collapse. You hear a shink and a thud on the ground. Oh fuck! Ash, it is now your turn. Okay, I'm gonna walk five, ten, fifteen feet around the corner. Um, what do I see? Card is dead, and his right hand has been cut off. Ah! Shit. And you see just the barest glimpse of the person running away. This trench-coated person, you can't quite see too much, with, uh, it looks like a, sh a long sword sheath disappearing into the night. Running at Damn, full tilt. And and he's gone. I can't like. You can see run him. after him. You can see him like dodge around the corner and into the crowd that's currently screaming away from the bar. Shit. Okay. And he has um, the hand. That is where we're gonna take our ten minute break, and we'll come back. Uh, oh. oh all right. I'll see you all soon. Uh, do you guys want to do five minutes or ten minutes? What do you guys want to do? I don't want to five. Let's do five. Let's do five. Great. Let's do five. Yeah. All right. See you all in five minutes. And we'll get back to the action. See ya! All right, all right, and we're back. As you guys round the corner and see this trench-coated figure with the with the sheath on their side, immediately just like running out into the streets, disappearing into the crowd. What are you guys doing? As you guys all pretty much, uh, Ash is the one who sees it. Uh, so Ash, you need to say something for everyone to know. Oh yeah. Hey, that man just took his hand. Let's go. Right as I hear, took his hand, uh, I bolt as fast as I can. All right, you do so. As you start sprinting, all of, of you, you guys are out of combat. As you guys are now sprinting, you guys are in a chase sequence now. As you guys all begin sprinting down, and you guys look over the crowd, there is the screaming crowd of bartender of, of, of all the bar patrons who are all out in the street moving and is chaos. I need you all to make perception checks to try and find this trench-coated man in the crowd. Okay. I'm good at those. 14. 14, okay. 21. Oh. 
19. 19, yes. And also, this is um, worth mentioning that city is my favored terrain, so ah. like difficult terrain wouldn't slow me down. Like Including theoretically, crowds. a bunch of people. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Uh, you guys are looking through the crowd, uh, but um, both uh, Todd and Ash, you guys look up and on the wall of the bar, you see the man running along the wall, like just incredibly fast, like super humanly fast above all of the people. And he's headed, uh, Ash, you can tell from your incredible procession check in the direction of the spaceport. Um, can I try to shoot him? Uh, he's about 300 feet away. Yeah, you can. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no he's, he's not 300. Sorry, he's uh, he's about 100 feet away. Yes, he can. I believe that's in your um, long range. Yeah, let me see. Uh... He has a very fast movement yeah, speed. Yeah, it is. Okay, sounds good. I I'm going to try. I'm going to try to get him in, like, Go the for foot it. or the leg. Okay. Like, something to slow him down. Go for it. It's a disadvantage, though, right? It is a disadvantage, yes. Okay, well, ooh, the first is a nat 20, so good Yo, for him. Yo, okay. Oh, God, very and then a two. Mate. Ah, you raise up your gun Nine. to shoot as you, you lock eyes on him, and you're like, there, and you pull back the revolver. Bang, as soon as you shoot, he leaps off the wall, turns, and you watch as he draws, like, it's a blur. You're not even sure what the weapon is, but there's a blur of metal, and your bullet is deflected out of the air. Shink, resheeds, ah. and he runs. Whoa. Okay, that's crazy. Um, I'm gonna yell out to my friends. I think he's headed for the spaceport! Let's get to the ship! Uh, I would like to run and take the same pathway that that person took. Oh, along the wall? Yep. <laughs> can you do that? Can you run along walls and surfaces? Uh, if I can get a good uh, acrobatics check. Uh, well, maybe for a little bit you can run along them. Uh, so we can see if you can like maybe vault over the crowd. So go to make an acrobatics yeah. check for me. Todd, with your perception check, since you're an android and you're kind of a receptacle for knowledge, uh, go ahead and make a history check for me as you're seeing this figure. I am good at those. That's Fuck an 18. Yeah. 18. Yeah, so you're able to vault over at least the entire crowd as you kind of like do this like like a parkour wall run and you're avoiding the entire entrance of the bar and vault over them and are able to now like start sprinting, keeping him uh, in the distance, like an eye on him. Um, That's a dirty 20 history check. Dirty 20 history check. Okay, so as you look out, um, you... You, being from your backstory, having been involved in the Titan Wars, remember that the Separatists, mm -hmm. uh, like, captains and commanders in the Separatists would often have genetically enhanced or trained soldiers underneath them. And as you look mm -mm. up at the skills of this being, and you know the history of Card, you begin to put a couple pieces together. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. And uh, when you say history of Card, meaning his affiliation? So Card was a commander in the Titan Wars. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. Interesting. All right. Interesting. Okay, great. So, um, uh -huh. And I also just want to point out that I'm going to, I'm trying to run in front and sort of be like a bulldozer. Oh. So like, I know, I know Ash can navigate, but I kind of am trying to like, just like bulldoze people out of the way to like, pave a path for us as we're going to the space. Okay, sounds good. We're doing like group skill checks from this point. I'm gonna count uh, tequilas as the first group skill check with the acrobatics check that allowed you to get over all that crowd and you kind of point and navigate the way. Um, you guys are trying to stay hot on the heels of him. So who wants to do the next round of skill checks to be able to stay on the tail of this trench coated man? Ash, do you um, want to do it since you have the city stuff? So the first one is a yeah, success because say. of tequila. Great job with that that great uh, roll for the acrobatics check, Zach. Great. So what do I add to this uh, roll? You get to tell me how do you want to stay on his heels? How do you want to... Because he's going really fast. He's superhumanly fast. How do you want to uh, slow him down or speed you guys up? You guys have a number of mm -hmm. options, as creative as you want to be. Okay. Um, I'm going to sort of be like scanning um, around the city, uh, noting like if there's an alley that looks like it cuts through, like looking for shortcuts or ways to sort of like cut him off. Okay, so I can um, say you can make either a perception check or survival check for me. This would be navigation okay. with survival or perception because you're just looking around, like trying Great. to find good routes. I'll do perception. Okay. Um, 14 plus three plus three again oh, is wow. 
20. 20. 20 is very good. You more than you find actually a couple of uh, uh a couple of fire escapes that are actually like leading up towards the roofs where you imagine that you remember a series of rooftops that could get you and it would keep you from having to go in the elevator. So you kind of like like go up, cock back your revolver and shoot down a couple of the latches as you guys find a, a series of fire escapes that lead up to the rooftops. Uh, and that is Great. able to cut off a lot of the distance that you need to travel to get to the spaceports, for sure. Nice. As you guys are now awesome. running along the rooftops now, above the skies of Hydra 2, uh, who wants to do the next group check? This is going to be the last one. So we've had two. <clears throat> um, hmm. no, I don't have anything for this. Okay. I Maybe... Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know. Can I like? Uh, I don't know. Is is? Can we see uh, yes. this figure on you, the rooftops? Uh, as you guys are looking on the rooftops, you can see that he's currently ascending on the side of the building. As you guys are running, looking down, he's ascending the side of the building like sideways, uh, running up along the glass, breaking a couple glass panes behind him. As he is like running along the surface, you can still see him. Yes. How hmm, far is okay. he? Oh man! Like at this point, since you guys have kept up pretty neck and neck, he's probably around sixty feet away. Okay, can I try to shoot him again? Yeah, uh, I would also like to take if he's in with, within sixty feet. I'll say like since Gavin throw. wanted to lead off this, uh, okay. this chase yeah, against, right, this yeah. is going to be. I'll give it to Gavin. You're right, Gavin. What did you? I will do? shoot. Okay, <laughs> as you pull out, as you take your walking cane that transforms into that oh, yes. makeshift hunting rifle, and you aim down at sights. Nice. Go ahead and roll to attack, please. Um, while he's getting ready, can I like take out this weird contraption and screw it onto the top, the barrel of my gun, and hold it up? Waiting for him to jump. Oh, uh, sure. All right, Todd, what's it? To, what's it to hit? Seventeen. That unfortunately just misses as the bullet goes Ooh, wide, just cutting through the trench coat, actually just breaking through the cloth, but not slowing him down at all. As he's just still sprinting up, and he looks up and now notices you on the building tops and begins to change his direction and his course. All right, Mason, what did you mean for the jump? Um. I was prepping something, but it didn't turn work out. So instead, um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take that off and put on another one. Okay. And take out this weird looking like plastic stick. I'm gonna crack it in half and then huh. shake it and it starts to glow. Okay. And I'm gonna put it into the barrel of the gun, aim it at him and shoot it. And I'm gonna cast fairy. Fire oh, he needs to make the dexterity saving throw. Yes, he yeah, does. Cool. Which he crazily enough even though with his crazy deck score he rolls a four and he fails so he's now oh, lit up from yeah. the flare as you know his exact location uh that you guys are not losing him anytime soon as you guys are sprinting across the rooftop jumping over the roofs and you guys are right by the space ports. as you see him careen in only about like 50 feet ahead of you lit up from the bright flare that was attached to him by uh sill and you watch as he jumps onto the side of a ship that's currently in liftoff uh, and he gives a thumbs up to the cockpit staring back at you all uh, as he goes how to enter. How far away it. is the ship from us? Uh, your ship or that ship? No, their, the, their ship. That ship is 50 feet away from you. Uh, I would like to try to sh uh, throw a blade at the, at the ship? pilot. Uh, okay, go make a quick perception check for me, please, because uh, you you know where the cockpit is, but you need to get good eyes on, like, through the glass of the, of the cockpit, basically. I'm going to expend us... Uh, a psychic, uh, a psychic die. Yep, die. Okay. So that is fourteen. Okay. Uh, you can make the attack. It's going to be a disadvantage, though. You can see it, and the the glass is a little fogged. Yeah, that that's enough for me. I'll still take. Okay, it. still at advantage. Or sorry, at disadvantage. So there's no sneak attack. It would just be the blades uh, die. Uh, <clears throat> that is a dirty twenty. Wait, at disadvantage. Yep. Really. That's amazing. Yep, I yes. I rolled a 14 and a 16. Okay. All right. Sounds good. R roll damage for me. Uh, that is eight damage. Eight damage. Okay. Wow. Okay. And then you, you watch as the ship like slowly shudders, uh, and then you watch as the guy kind of curse, and he runs over to the cockpit, uh, and as he he wrenches, and you watch him like go to like break open the cockpit and like knock on it. All right. You guys are almost there. Yeah, uh, since I did that, can I also take the bonus action psychic blades that I have? So, like, right as I release one, as that one releases, I'm pulling back for another one and throw as well. Sure. Oh, uh, same cockpit at the pilot? Yep. Okay. Uh, still disadvantage? 
Uh, this is still a disadvantage, yes. That is a 21 to hit. Oh, really? A disadvantage? My god. Yeah, I okay, that's amazing. Roll, roll, roll your damage dice. That Big is... Money. Five damage. Five. Okay, sounds good. Uh, you watch as a, a shadow slumps over in the cockpit. Uh, the man breaks open the hull, ripping off the entire front portion of that cockpit, pulls out the body and jumps in himself. As you watch as the airship begins to glide, no longer piloted by him, uh, by that other pilot as he throws the body over the side and the body just, just falls into the skies of Hydra 2 and it begins to take off. Your guys' ship is nearby. I'm gonna make a break for that ship. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. You guys go. You guys begin running in, uh, jumping into the pilot seat in front. Uh, as you guys are all taking your positions, uh, who's taking what positions? I'm hopping in the gun. Hopping in the gun. Okay, tequila. Okay, I'll man the. Oh, go ahead. I'll pilot it. You pilot it. A couple of you don't even have to be on inside the ship. A couple of you can ride on top. You guys are in atmosphere. I'm gonna fucking ride on top. Okay. Okay. The engine's fine. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. All right, sounds good. <laughs> actually, if I can, I'd actually like to be on top. You'd as like well. to be on top as well. Then would you like to be the gunner, uh, Ash? Yeah, that's great. And okay. then, am I going to be able to control the grapple cable from the gunner position? Uh, the grapple cable is the pilot's uh, position. Is the pilot's. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Yeah, sounds I'll take good. the. I'll take the gun. Lovely. All right, as. The ship sputters to life, taking off into the sky. You guys just careening, just right hot on the tails of this other one. You guys are now chasing through the skies oh of Hydra God. 2. Oh yeah. my yeah. Lit. All right, Holy all right. <clears throat> okay, sounds good. So, Tequila, you are on top. Uh, yep. uh, who else is on top? Um, uh, Todd. Uh, Todd. Todd is on top. Yeah. Okay, sounds uh. good. So Todd is on top, Ash, you're in the gunner seat, and still so you are piloting. So that's the U2 on top of the of the ship. Uh, right now, uh, as you can see for your distance, you guys are about um, a little over 60 feet away from the ship. So you guys can't quite get a good angle from where you are now. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and roll. Uh, I, I want you guys, one of you, to choose initiative for your group. Uh, no, let's roll initiative. Let's roll initiative. Let's do that. Let's roll initiative. Everybody? Okay. Yeah, everybody. Cool. We're backing. We're Oof, back into uh, combat. Ooh, so bad. Okay. Yes, yeah, same. Oh gosh. Uh huh. Let's see. Okay, ten for Sill. Uh no. Oh, that's not you. Wait, that's not me. F is Wait, four you? Four is me. Four is you. Okay. Gotcha. I was looking Can at your old. I was looking at your old roll. Um. Yeah, we are not doing well. Oh gosh. Oh no. Yeah. I am. Ash, what's your deck score? Uh, my initiative is plus three. My dex is plus three. Do you have 16 or 17? Oops, what? <laughs> What's the number, like, for your dex? Uh, 16. Wow, we have the same dex score. Okay, Daniel, up to you. Who goes uh, first? Yeah, you guys, up to you guys, up to you guys, whoever wants to do whatever. So, I feel like maybe... Okay, 16 for Ash, 16 for... Maybe guns? Okay, sounds good. Guns go first. Um, yeah, great. What is going on? Um, okay, my my roll twenty is just going crazy. Sorry. Um, okay, so uh, sorry. Can you guys give me your initiative scores? My my roll twenty is going a little a little mad. Yeah, no worries. Uh, five for Todd. Um, I see. Ash and uh, yeah. Ash and uh, Todd are five. Okay. Well, uh, you can make Ash six because she's gonna go f or he's gonna go first. Okay, Ash, Ash is gonna go first. Uh, Tequila, what's your twenty one? Yep. Okay, you go first, Tequila. Um, uh, and, um, the, the trench coat man, the mysterious man, I'm just going to give him question marks. He is, uh, he rolled a 19. Okay. So, all right, Dequila, you are up and the other pilots on deck. By the way, your, your ships are not going to be moving in relative position to each other because you both have the same speed. The only way to slow him down is to target his engines. You can either destroy his ship or you can destroy his guns. That's up to you. So... Cool. Am I so? Am, uh, is the ship my range, like from, or is it from my token? It's to from your token. Ship? It's from your token to their okay. ship. Since you're, since you're on top, yeah. So, I would like to best I can get as close to the 
front of the ship as they sure, can? Sure, of course. You can you can sort of hang off the side. It's a precarious position to be in, but yeah, you can yeah, be yeah. there. But I and then I will throw another psychic blade at uh What's your this range? Engine. Sixty. Your range is sixty. Okay. If you so get if, if you if you move yourself it, at the front yeah. Uh, 60 just hits that engine. Yes. So you can so cool. go to move your token to the front. And I cannot. Oh, now I can. Yes, yeah. you can. Go ahead and roll to attack, please. That is a dirty 20 to hit. Dirty 20. Dirty 20 hits. Go to roll damage. Ooh, that's not great. That's just a uh, just five damage. Five damage. Okay. Sounds good. And then bonus action, another tomahawk. Okay, sounds good. All right. Uh, so, second attack. Go to make it. As you that throw is... these blades just manifesting in the middle of the air, just trying to just, like, hit the engines in any capacity. 14 to hit. 14. And these do, uh, that hits. These do psychic damage, right? Yes. All right. They pass through the ship, doing no damage. Ah, as gotcha. it is not. It's a, it's a machine. And it doesn't have a mind. As you see, right. your first tomahawk just woof, just slip through the engine, un not hitting it unfortunately at all. Gotcha. That ends my turn. All right, sounds good. Okay, next up is their ship. Um, as an action, uh, he's going to. Uh, you watch as the the mounted gun on top begins to turn in your direction. This turret, as it goes, doo -doo 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 -doo, as a couple of like shots begin raining back at you all. Um, Shit. yeah, so it's going to roll to hit for that. Oh, it might not hit. That's a 14 to hit. Uh, miss. Miss as it, as you, uh, as you're piloting itself and you swerve to the right, the ship it, like narrowly misses as the shots d -d 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 careen, uh, past the side of your ship as you like veer it to the right and then bring it back on course. Oh. Nice stuff. That's going to be the end of that oh, ship's yeah. turn. Ash, you are up. Todd, you're on deck. All right, I'm going to bonus action aim this turret at um, this like closest engine. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, and then I will shoot. All right, okay, please do. Shoot. Um, okay. I'm not seeing what am what am I adding to? Uh, oh the yes, role so like your uh, you, so you should see in um, um. In uh, uh, key items in your journal, if you look at the yeah, series, I'm looking I at the dead dog. If you look at the character sheet, there's mounted turret. Mounted turret. Yeah, oh, it doesn't I see say. that. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. What? That's crazy. Hold on. It should be uh, your. Why doesn't it say? Oh, there it? it is. Yeah, it should be to hit is plus six, and it's uh, uh it's a two d twelve plus nine damage if you hit. So you add six. Okay, to your now I can see roll. that. Yeah. So you add Great. six. Great. Great. Um, that's a seventeen to hit. That hits. Go to roll damage. 2d12 plus roll. 9, which is a lot of damage. Yeah. I'll roll in here. Great. As the turrets from the sides of your uh, of your ship kind of just, like, m takes aim, you're kind of in the little little gunner's cockpit, just kind of, like, aiming, a la, like, Luke in Star Wars, right? And as you're kind of aiming at the engine, you get a good lock that you feel, and as a, a volley of shots, boom, 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 launch off from the side. Oh, oh my god. Nice. Hell That's yeah. 29 oh, piercing no. damage. Whoa. Whoa. That, you watch as it slams into that engine and it begins to smoke and shake um let me double check okay it, it isn't quite losing speed but the engine is starting to smoke starting to smoke all right sick good stuff good mo shot the bottom most one right Th one? yes that is this one uh the closest one that you said this one right uh, it was the bottom one. yes it was the bottom or this one bottom oh one. sorry the bottom one yeah bottom yeah, one yeah. yeah that's the bottom one beginning to okay. shake and sputter yes okay Good stuff. All right, Ash, that ends your turn. Todd, you're up. Okay, you're uh, you're up. The wind kind of like bla blasting past you as uh, as your spaceships are rocketing through the city, narrowly missing high-rise skyscrapers above the sky of Hydra 2. Okay, yeah. I am navigating with my uh, stick sort of on this thing to sort of keep my balance. And I'm mm -hmm. going to, similar to uh, Tequila, I'm going to move to the very front edge of it. Mm -hmm. using my cane to maneuver okay and then i'm gonna take that same cane pull it up um and aim it at uh that same engine but right before i do okay uh todd pulls out a little wrench and starts oh. like fidgeting 
uh -huh. on the rifle a uh -huh. little bit. And he's going to do a trick shot, which okay. he has with his uh, firearm proficiency background. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so he is going to fire with his rifle at the bottom of his engine. Okay. And which trick shot are you doing? I'm going to be. Do oh my god! First of all, that's a nat twenty. Oh! Two hit. Ooh. So you so you get your grip point back from expending the trick <clears throat> shot. So you actually don't lose any grip from that. Yes, that's true. Um, yeah, so I'm spending one grip point to do a violent shot. Oh, which God. means I get an extra damage roll, and and uh -huh. the damage is doubled. So, oh, oh. So that's so. Uh, so you're rolling two d10 for the rifle. So an extra damage dice is three d10, and you double all that. That's six d10 that you're rolling. Hell. Oh yeah. my God. So, yeah. so first, okay. So that's. It is over for these bitches. Holy Let's shit. go. Uh, that is <laughs> a total of, with this one fucking shot, 32 piercing damage. Oh, oh you watch us as, as you look at like the rattling on the cage, you see a small open panel on the side of the engine. Take your shot, take a, well, you don't take a deep breath, but your eyes, your eye narrows in on that space and as it launches, the bullet slams in there and you watch as the engine explodes flames and debris just streaming off the side as you watch the ship um slow down and come into range Hell yeah um great and as as todd shot that I, th I imagine he like got pushed back a little bit too he's like yeah oh. mm. just a beautiful shot i like that um, and then I'm going to action surge, oh, uh, get oh. an extra action, and I'm going to hold that action to jump once it's in range onto that ship. Okay, sounds good. Nice. All right, Sil, Sick. it is your turn. Um, I'm going to look at Ash. Gavin, say, great turn. Wow, that great was a great turn. shot. Thank you. Um, and then I'm going to try to grapple cable it. Grapple nice. cable it. Okay, yeah. go for it. 16 to hit. Six. 16 hits as from below the ship, ting, it like clamps right here as a grapple cable is now right fixed there from your ship to that, tying the two ships together. And it does 13 damage. It needs to make strength saving. Well, yeah, it's ship. Oh. Great. So uh, 18 damage. No, no, no. The 13. I just didn't see the damage. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. So 13 damage. Good stuff. So that's 13 damage total on the ship's hull. Nice stuff. Good stuff. Yep. All right. And that was my turn. Okay, okay, sounds good. That's the end of your turn. As there is now a grapple cable tying uh, the two of your ships together, um, you can now go to uh, cross it if you want, uh, Todd. Um, fuck yeah. I'm going to use my quarter staff as sort of like a, you know, um, like a bar to hold on to as I'm going on this grapple to get over there. Like I'm like I'm. Oh, like uh, you're zip lining. Like, like zip lining. Like zip lining. Oh yeah, my gosh! Crazy. All right, sure. If if you're above, uh, if if uh, if Mason pilots above, I'll allow it. Yeah. As you zip line and now boom, hit this side of the ship, as you're now oh, there. Yeah. Great. Nice. All right, all right. As you guys are watching, the buildings are starting to stream past and getting a little bit lower in density. As you guys kind of look over at the horizon, Mason, from your cockpit, and you're starting to see a desert uh, kind of on the edge of the city as you guys are now almost outside of the, the, the city grounds. All right. So, Sil, last thing, though. As you guys are going, there's a series of, uh, high, of skyscrapers that are actually coming up right in front of you. I need you to make a piloting check to be able to make sure that you guys get out of harm's way. Oh, gosh, what is this? So a piloting check. This is your vehicle's check. This is either dex uh, this is going to be your intelligence or wisdom score plus your proficiency bonus plus a d20 I'll roll. The, I'll take the intelligence. All right. Um, proficiency. Oh my Ooh. God. As Good. you um, as you see it a little too late, focusing on the grapple cable, you nick the side of the building. A, a, just a slew of glass just exploding out in front of you. The whole thing shaking. I need everyone on the ship to make a dexterity saving throw for me, please. My bad. <laughs> Um, dexterity save. Uh, this does not include you, uh, Todd, because you're on the other Sick. ship. Uh, 13. 13, that succeeds. You you narrowly escape falling off the side of the ship. Tequila. I rolled an 8. You rolled an 8. You, boom, slam into the co uh, the cockpit, and your your ship is now, like, without a, without a pilot for right now. 
Oh gosh. As you like fall oh, out of your yeah. chair from the rumble. <laughs> Oh, I thought you meant like I passed out on the. No, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't rumble, but you <laughs> slammed your head into the shield, and you're now like on the floor, like uh, uh. Shit, I got uh, a ten. Ten. That's just fine, Ash. As you are ro rocked a little bit in the middle of the ship, but you're able to keep your footing on the gunner seat. Uh, the ship is starting to slowly descend. All right, Tequila, you are now up. All right. So quickly, I am going to run across this okay you zip line across and then i'm going to use a bonus action to get up to dash and get up here mm -hmm. is the uh is there a hatch or anything uh there is the the cockpit's uh thing is open because he he literally ripped it open oh that's right it so is so he is he is currently exposed there um if you wanted to see him. Then I am going to take an attack. Okay, um, all right. Sounds good. Please do make your attack. As you see his form now, he is a a silver-haired man with a sheath by his side, trench coat, and it looks like a, a cloth serving as an eye patch over his left eye. Uh, there's also a number of mechanical enhancements that have been given to him that you're noticing underneath his trench coat. Okay, so I'm gonna ask a question. Yes. Could I possibly get advantage because he's focusing on piloting the ship? Uh, and you would have I'm to use right your you'd have to use your bonus action to hide to stealth in order to do that. Okay. Okay. So just the fact that he's not that he's not even paying attention to what's behind him because he's piloting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. cool, cool. Works okay. Me. Sounds good. That is a twenty-three to hit. 23 will hit. Go and roll damage. That is 10 damage. 10 damage. Uh, sneak attack. Oh. Yeah. Sneak attack? Yes, sneak attack. All right. That is 8 sneak attack. 8 sneak attack on top of 10, so a total of 18 damage. Yep. Nice. It catches him off guard as he goes, uh, as he like stares up at you, <sighs> as he sees that you're on the ship now, and he's looking out of the cockpit, looking out over the desert. All right, and okay. And that ends my turn. That ends your turn. Sounds good. Okay, okay. Next up is him. He sees you. Um, gosh, what is he going to do? He is going to immediately, like, slam something on the, on the cockpit, and he's going to rise out of the cockpit's chair and is going to stand up facing you. Uh, and he's going to he's gonna whip out what looks like a knife from his side and throw it at you. He's actually not gonna he's actually gonna stay in the pilot seat. That no, he's gonna but he's gonna take he's gonna take what looks to be like a small wakizashi and just fling it out in your direction. Uh, that's gonna be ooh natural eighteen to hit. Yeah, that hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's going to be a. Uh, just give me a second. That's gonna be a. That's gonna be seven points of damage as it pierces into you. All right, just take that hit. Sounds good, sounds and good. Look he screams something into the wind, but you can't hear him as it's like, it's literally just blasting all around you. Uh, and then he's gonna go and you watch as he's like eyeing his uh, his cockpit frantically. All right, Ash, you are now up. You're in the gunner seat. All right, Um, what's, sorry, if I maybe spaced this information, but is there something going on with their turret? Uh, like. The, it hasn't fired. Uh, he has. Uh, he's currently uh, engaged in combat with uh, Dequila right now. So it's, uh, it's pretty rough. Dequila and uh, Todd are on the surface of this ship. Okay. Um, I'm gonna fire at the turret then. Okay. Sounds good. Go in and make roll and attack, please. Great. Ooh, fifteen plus. Oh, that hits. Okay. Great. Roll damage. And then I will just roll in here again because that's a lot of numbers. Plus, oh, 2d12. 30 damage. 30? Yeah, look at the roll 20, man. Oh my gosh, oh, 30 crap. damage, my goodness. That's nuts. Uh, the turret, one of the, one of the turret, like, guns bends back from the force of the blast, uh, rendering it, it's not completely useless, but it is, it is almost, like, gone, the turret. Uh, the smoking engine and the turret severely damaged. You feel the heat from the blast on your face, Tequila. 
Um, it is a it is a crazy crazy segment as the guns just do, 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 and rip through the turret. Nice Ash. Jeez, that's a lot Great. of damage. Wow. All right. That's a lot of damage. All right, Todd. That's good rolls. You are you are now up. <clears throat> okay. Um. So this engine here, mm -hmm. I presume, is pretty fucked up. It is pretty now, effed. Huh? Yes, it's effed. It's gone. So you're okay. good. Okay. This one is still going. Correct. Um. I'm gonna like fucking. Imagine like General Grievous like spider climbing to like move around here <laughs> yes. with my quarter yes. stuff. Yes. Um, yes. Um, and then I'm gonna get to this engine and mm -hmm. I want to try and like destroy it slash dismantle it with my tools. Oh, with your tinker tools. Go to make a tinker tools check for me, please. Uh this will okay. this will determine what uh, dice I'll allow you use for this. <clears throat> All right. Oh my that's a nat 20 baby. Whoa! Total 23. Oh my god, yeah. Okay, <laughs> man, man, Gavin. As you go in... I eat this engine just you go to You go to deactivate it. You actually, you don't even get to destroy it. You see a panel, which is like, which is a fuel cable leading into the engine. You see that, and you're like, that's the spot. You break that and that only, and the entire engine shuts down as the whole ship shudders and shakes beneath you. Um, hold on, I gotta see something. Uh, the whole ship is now shaking and shuddering and oh, vibrating uh, as it looks like at any moment it could go. Uh, Tequila and I Todd, you both realize this. Yeah, I, I call out, uh, Sil, it seems like this ship is about to go, as you say, down. <laughs> and that is the end of my turn. You have your you have your movement still because that was about ten feet of movement to move across the uh, true. Across the engine. Um, I'll move. Um, I'll move more to the center of the ship for like a better uh, hold, uh, so it's not so precarious. I'll just move closer to uh, tequila, like like right there. Okay. All right. Sounds and good. That'll be the end. All right. Perfect. All right, Sil, you're up. Um, what are you doing? I'm gonna use. My movement to get up and sit back in the you, pilot's you chair. You sit back in the pilot's chair, <laughs> boo, and you like bring back the throttle as you guys started descending at a pretty significant rate. It was getting really scary there as you started nose diving towards the city, but you careen up. Go ahead and make a piloting check for me. This is to see what you lose or gain off of this. 19. 19. Uh, the grapple cable, you watched it go taut as you begin to nosedive, and you watched as the cable began to stretch and almost break. But uh, you get into the pilot's chair easily enough, fast enough to pull back on the nose, and the grapple cable does not break. So the connection between the two ships stays. Let's go. Let's go. All right, and so. Then... Yeah, that's my turn. I that's your turn. Pilot. Nice. And you're piloting. You're good. You guys are now crossing the borders of the edge of the city into the desert. Tequila, you are now up, and the whole shake underneath uh, the ship underneath you is shuddering. Um. Okay. As you're watching a couple fires burn up from the side of that engine and the mounted turret, now there's like some fires going on the on the surface of the ship. Okay. So could I use that smoke to bonus action hide and then try to sure. slide of hand the hand from the cockpit? Oh, sure. Uh. Sure. So go to make a uh, 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 so go to make the stealth roll for me first. That is sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. That's you're hidden. Wait. Oh, actually, I do. Actually, I do need to check this. Hold on. Sixteen. Okay. All right. And then and you go then to for the sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. All right. So go to make a sleight of hand roll at advantage because you are hidden. Uh, that is 16, but I think I'm going to use another mm -hmm, psionic mm -hmm. dice. And that is 18. 18. As you look over on the left-hand side of the cockpit, right next to the sheath, you see uh, the hand. Uh, the severed hand currently ble like uh, bleeding uh, onto the surface of the, of the, uh, the ship's cockpit. Uh, and you just, you immediately just scramble out grab it and begin running over when you notice the the silver-haired man notices you going back you, but you gotcha. do get it you get it no problem but i get it and i start and i head back no problem yes you had to get back no uh you're within five feet of him no i'll say with no problem i'll say i'll allow it cool and then so that was like 
10 feet to get there. So yes. One, two, three, four, five. I think that the yeah, five, 10, 15. That's 30. And like 20, I think is, yeah. Okay. This, uh, so I'll get here and start trying to head back. Okay, sounds good. It is now his turn. The entire ship just shaking underneath you all and beginning to descend rapidly. You watch as uh, this man turns up and looks over at you all. Um, and it's at this point that you get a name, uh, Todd. As you're looking at him, you remember a famous soldier from the Titan Wars who had a description of silver hair and using a sword. His name was, his nickname was Cutlass. Um, he's, uh, his name was Yedo Cutlass Pak. Um, and you watch him kind of look up at the ship, look over. He kicks the wheel of the ship until it breaks. And he looks over at you all, smiles, pulls out two daggers, rising up from the cockpit chair, kind of like consigning himself to the fate of the ship. One, uh, he's going to throw one at you, uh, tequila, one at you, Gavin. First one at tequila, that is going to be a 19 to hit. That hits. The second one is an 11 to hit. Misses. Okay, so tequila, the dagger does seven points of damage to you. All right. All right. And he smiles. And then he's going to, she, uh, with, with both daggers thrown now, he's going to look down. And he, he's stepped right over this panel in the ship. And he punches down, breaking the surface of the metal. And rips out a handful of wires from the ship smiling at you. And you watch as the ship, poof, begins to immediately turn off. All the engines gone. And it begins to descend, <clears throat> falling out of the sky. That is. Are we above sand yet? You guys are above the sand, but the sand when you hit it is not like uh, it's not, not a, a pillow not when you're <laughs> hundreds of feet oh, up what, in the air. What if I what if I roll really well and try to like Scrooge McDuck dive into it? Will I be fine then? Uh, you know, I wish cartoon physics worked in a Western world. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's like um. How do I? All right, the coyote? ship is oh, now. I, I forgot. This is real life. His ship is now is now falling out of the sky. We, you guys have one turn. Ash, what are you doing? Are you helping them in some way? Um, yes, I would like to help in some way. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just sort of manning the the turret. Is that like at the top of the ship? Uh, it's in the middle of the ship. You could get to the hatch if you wanted. That's enough movement for you to get to the hatch. Okay, um, I will, I will get to the hatch and like sort of get, um, out onto the surface, okay. There. Yep, so you're out on the surface, the wind blowing past your, your face as you're seeing this, the smoke is now streaming past you from the destroyed engines, but you can barely see your friends currently starting to fall out of the sky from where they are. Shit. Um, I'm going to call down to uh, Syl and say, huh. we should try to get underneath them if we can! I'll try. Um... I think that's really all that I can do. All right, sounds good. As you're going out, you can move towards the edge of the of the ship. I'd say that to get to the uh, your thing is 15 feet of movement. Uh, so you have 15 feet remaining okay. if you want. Yeah, I'll do that. Sounds good. All right, all right. Okay, Ash. So you're now on the edge of the ship, looking out at your teammates. Todd, you are now up. What are you doing? As the ship underneath you is starting to fall, and your 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 feet are starting to like like give away as you're trying to keep balance, watching this man smile at you behind his eye patch and his sword and his trench coat. Hmm. Um. Does it look from here like our ship is trying to intercept us? Uh, and it, I? uh. Uh. It might. Still hasn't started his turn yet. So. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna run over here. Okay. And I am going to dislodge the grapple hook. You're dislodging the grapple hook. Oh no. Yep. All right, are you keeping a hold of it or are you just completely letting it go? Um. You know what? I'm going to hold my action to dislodge the grapple hook. Um, 
hopefully like maybe tequila will get off or something and just dislodge it when it seems like this ship is going to start pulling down our ship got it That's what understood gonna... okay so it and now... with the hope of with the hope of like when i dislodge it perhaps i'm still grabbing onto it okay all right so you are you are now up so this is your maneuver how are you gonna try and help your friends okay is moving the ship or like maneuvering the ship in action it is uh well, it's Wait, no, it's it a, no 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 it's it's yeah well what it do you want not. what do you want to do what okay. do you want to do bonus action i'm gonna i'm gonna activate um sputnik okay i'm saying all right this hurts me so much but i need to get rid of this windshield and he's gonna go and attack the windshield and break the glass in front of okay me. sounds good uh go to have him make an attack oh gosh um this uh 21 to hit 21 to hit damage. Chink. The, the glass, like, launches above you, and it whips past you, uh, uh, Ash, almost hitting you as the windshield just, like, flies past you, and now you have, like, the wind just streaming into your cockpit. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, di like, dive, basically, and, like, lower myself, try to get within, like, both of them within 60 feet. Okay. And I'm just gonna try to get closer. And Go ahead and make here. a piloting maneuver for me, please. 18. 18. As the ship... As you maneuver it into a position... That shifts you all... Right about there. Awesome. You, are, you are now underneath. And the grapple cable is still attached to the area. Ooh. Cool stuff. Good stuff. Alright, Tequila, it's your move. All right, I am going to use my full movement to run mm -hmm. and jump on to the Jump on, okay, it's a little bit ship. below. It's about 10 feet as you jump down below. So you take, uh, you just only take one point of bludgeoning damage from falling as you poof, roll on uh, onto the surface of the ship, just kind of bouncing off the hull slightly. Uh, and then I'm going to hold my action for when Todd gets off the ship. Okay. And then I am going to cast my racial trait, Burning Hands. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. He does nothing. He just braces himself against the surface of the ship. Todd, what are you doing? Yeah, I think it's at this point that uh, seeing Tequila jump off that I'm going to dislodge the grapple hook and just hold on for dear and life. you hold that on, action. sounds good. As you woof, grab on and now woof, swing underneath the ship, uh, you're all dislodged from the ship as it begins to careen down just off into nothingness. This whole ship just vanishing out of sight as you are holding on for dear life. Um, and he... Mm -hmm. Before they spiral out of control, I'm going to take out my revolver that still has that special barrel on it and i'm gonna aim at todd and shoot him and it little like like a fist size projectile hits his chest and like wraps around him and then out the back is a little parachute and i'm gonna cast feather fall on him feather fall okay sounds good he's grappling <laughs> on but he is a little parachute is just kind of taking you back you're kind of actually now like uh like water skiing behind the ship now uh, todd <laughs> is going like ah! and holding on to the grapple cables it's like um and then your burning hands goes off, uh, Dequila. All right. Go to make your burning hands. It's, uh, all right. That is 4d6. Uh, that is 15 damage. 15. The ship explodes as it poof, a heat wave <laughs> blasts off from you, and it poof, careens down like just just debris spinning out over the desert. But as you watch, you watch a form, a silhouette, leap out of the flames and gently fall down. Just all the way down towards the sand, like a meteor slam into the ground as this giant puff of sand is there. I like um, the I, I, ship and go, 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 go. And Todd yells out, this man is heavily modified. He may be alive. Be cautious. I'll kind of like slow down enough for everyone to get inside safely. Okay, and everyone does get inside. 
turn around and go to the back into the city. Okay, you're not gonna pursue after after him in the in the desert. Do we want to? Um, Ash is gonna yes. look over at them and say, <laughs> "Did you get the hand?" I got the hand. Hell yeah. <laughs> 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 um well I don't see any reason to go after the guy if we've got what we came for hmm. personally yeah I don't know how much weight the vote of an android holds but I would like to pursue I'm just here to get money Let's grab the hand and let's get out of here before we get into any more trouble. Couldn't agree more, partner. I, I, Captain. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know where I'm going. All right. Well, you're minus a windshield for your yeah. ship. And certainly, uh, you're going to need quite a bit of supplies before you yeah. launch out into space again, given the amount of damage that you guys somewhat took uh, there. Yeah. But, as you guys go back to the spaceport, end up finding a bit of time, and take the hand over to, uh, to the bounty board, you're able to get the, uh, the bounty for the man. That's 2.5 million, Jinza, uh, for Carl yeah. Isaacson. Yes! Yeah, yeah. Living particularly well. Having some food on the table, at least for now. Although, with the cost of the ship repairs, and then the damage that you did to the bar, and other things, you end up finding yourself at about 100,000, Jinza. About just enough to make rent for the month. But, that's the life of a bunch of Skase Cowboys. And, hopefully you'll be out on another bounty sometime soon. And with you all, mm -hmm. flying out back over into space, that is, I guess, where we're going to end the game today. Yeah! Awesome! Yeah. Yeah. Nice Woo. stuff. Nice stuff. Oof. Can All I right. add in that before we left, Todd Oof. paid his um, tab at the at the bar. He did pay his tab at the bar. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you got it. All right, y'all. Well, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed. Um, Hell yeah, man. That yeah. was amazing. Yeah. All right, y'all. Um, uh, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, that was our Space Cowboy one shot for today. Uh, I hope it was a, a grand old time. And, uh, uh, we'll see you guys next week, hopefully, with uh, a return of the Grim Troop. So, we'll see you all then. Thanks so much yeah. for joining us. Yeah. And, uh, let's see if there's Thank anybody we need, a, we need a shout out. I think we're good. Uh, Mason, Zach, thanks for joining us today. I hope you guys have fun. And, yeah, um, yeah. we will uh, see you all, uh, next time, hopefully. All right. This is Stop, Jump, and Roll signing off. Bye bye. Bye.